Well, hello, Dragon Gate fans, and welcome to Glorious Gate 2020 here at Kobe Sambo Hall. Um, I would say this is a very unique situation, but um, so we're gonna start with the usual space gate, and we'll get right back to you as soon as this is done. What are you at a funeral here, buddy? Huh? You're acting like, you know, what's studio wrestling from Japan, man? Okay, let's try this again. Hello, Dragon Gate fans, and welcome to Glorious Gate 2020 from Kobe Sambo Hall. Jay and Larry Dallas here. And we're gonna kick it off with the Torimon generation is gonna come to the ring, and I'm sure we're gonna get an in-depth explanation of the this situation we have here. Yeah, the explanation for the situation is the reason why you're at home watching this for free is because the world's in free fall panic. I'm somehow stranded in Japan, and I've waited three weeks to be able to do this, and nothing's gonna stop me. So, I'm excited. This is the most unique experience I've ever lived through. The fact that there's no fans here. I feel like I'm doing 1970s, 1980s studio wrestling from Japan. I have to Japan. disagree with you there, because there are very clearly fans in the front row right now. And Torimon Generation welcoming us here. Paid extras. Well, even with no fans in attendance today, the Torimon Army is ready to go here tonight. We are empty arena due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. I don't think we're gonna be able to start with Gong Kids though, like we normally would. Well, for those people watching for the first time, the guy all the way to your left is Naruki Doi. That's our Open the Dream Gate champion. He's our top champion here in Dragon Gate. The, the guy rambling on is Ryo Saito. Well, this is where he would normally pick a, pick a child out of the crowd to ring the bell. But, uh, 
there are no kids in attendance, but I think they're still gonna they're still gonna try and do it. Stalker, Stalker Ichikawa is eager. I did just mention we have six matches tonight and we're gonna go non-stop. We've got no intermission. Kids time. Yeah, the only kid in here is Dragon Kid. Saito was saying, in absence of having it, pulling a kid into the ring, one of our fans watching at home, get your favorite drink, get your favorite snack, and ring the, ring the bell along with all of us from the comfort of your own home. Standard practice is Ryo Saito would ask for a show of hands, and uh, the kid with the most energy is the one that gets pulled in, and it's going to be no different here. He's going to pull the uh, whichever fan, quote unquote. What do you think? What do you think, Larry? Gamma's getting really excited on the apron. See, on the right, it's on the right-hand side. We've got the Torimon generation. On the left-hand side, it's Dragon, the Dragon Gate generation. And on the side close to us, it's the big wigs. We got the president. But it looks like Gamma is going to be the one ringing our opening bell. Let's get, let's give him the hand. He's just a fan, he doesn't know what side the hard camera's on. <laughs> well, he just gave his real name. I'm not gonna repeat it for the sake of, uh, for various reasons. Forty-six years old. I feel like I'm stuck on a Japanese variety show right now. Well, for those watching for the first time, welcome to Dragon Gate.
Well, this is the most important question. It's going to be what, who's his favorite wrestler? He's not going to say Larry Dallas. Punch Tominaga is his favorite wrestler here in Dragon Gate. Well, it, it, it took having enormous Punch Tominaga chant. It, it took having no fans in the building for Tominaga to actually get a pop from a crowd. Words of encouragement from our, our gong kid. 46 years young. It is now finally time for us to get down to business. There we go. What they pay me to come here to Japan for. We finally get to watch some wrestling live. We had spin. Get to commentate it, have a good old time with it. We are going to start off with six man tag team action. Coming to the ring first is the team of Kai, Punch Tominaga, and Jimmy. And they will be taking on the team of Yamato, Jason Lee, or I'm sorry, Problem Dragon, and Oh Holun. Actually, this card was changed at the last minute before the show. Strong Machine J, I guess his uh, internal fan was overheating, so he is off the show tonight. Coming out right now for you guys. That's Punch Tommy Naga, the first one out with the do-rag on his head. Jimmy's the luchador from Mexico, just got back here two weeks ago. This is his first show since he's been back here in Japan. Very different circumstances than what he was expecting to come back to. And, and, and a larger gentleman is Kai, who was a freelancer here in Japan for a long time, now is a full roster member here at Dragon Gate. Very, very excited for this opener. I know Jimmy's been Jimmy's very excited to get back to pro wrestling here. Well, As we all are. We all are. All the various Dragon Gate wrestlers during the recent downtime, many of them went on to Instagram and SNS, did a little bit of Q&A. There was a common answer amongst all of them. I cannot wait to get back in the ring. Coming to the ring now will be the team of Yamato, Problem Dragon, and Ho Ho Loon. Yamato, the, in many ways, the leader of the Dragon Gate generation, four time former Open the Dream Gate champion. This three way generation warfare that's going on right now the Torimon generation, the Dragon Gate generation, and RED. This was his idea. For those of you watching for the first time at home, the guy in the mask is Problem Dragon. The guy in the t-shirt is Ho Ho Loon. Ho Ho Loon! 
International problem dragon Larry Dallas is greatest protege. There is the almighty Yamato. Ho Ho Loon, formerly from NXT, a Hong Kong transplant here in Japan, leads up the Hong Kong Pro Wrestling Federation. Um, he's the trainer there. Yamato, obviously the one, the more muscular of the three. Dra uh, Dragon Gate legend. The other side, Kai and Punch Tominaga also represent the Dragon Gate generation. Kai came to Dragon Gate in the, towards the end of 2018 on a freelance basis. The, early last year, he joined the now defunct Tri Vanguard unit as an assistant. Some more words of encouragement from Gamma at ringside. And we are off and running here at Glorious Gate 2020. Starting off with Yamato and Punch Tominaga. This is the first for Dragon Gate. We've one time wrestled with no ring, but I don't think we've ever wrestled with no real crowd. This is a well, actually, it's funny you say that because Yamato, out of everybody here, he and Don Fuji once wrestled an empty arena match back in 2008. So if anyone is suited to compete here, it's it's him. Yamato has a Pancrase background. Pancrase is a Japanese MMA promotion, um, very well based in submission grappling. Probably one of the most dangerous men on the roster. As Kai. These guys are best friends. Kai, who might be the biggest member of the roster. Together, these guys are former Open the Twin Gate champions, which is the tag team championship here in Dragon Gate. They actually competed for the Open the Twin Gate, which is currently held by the, the RED team of BB Hulk and Kazma back on March 1st at Champion Gate in Colby. The last time I saw you, Larry. Yes, I've been sitting in a dojo for the past 21 days since then on lockdown. That match went to a no contest, so I'm sure these two are going to be very eager to get another shot at those championships sometime down the road. With all the recent cancellations, we haven't had a, a ruling on what that decision means. If you're one of the people watching from home, I just want to sincerely say from on behalf of everyone here at Dragon Gate, we're very happy to be able to entertain you. We hope you're staying safe. We hope your family's safe, and we hope that we all get through this as a world together very shortly. I know I'd like to, uh, you know, eventually get back to working here full time and, you know, being able to come back to America. I don't know if they want you back. No, they probably don't. Yamato and Kai, obviously know each other very well, very good friends. Yamato with the side headlock there. These two are actually scheduled to face off in a six-way match back on March 5th in Corican Hall in a show that was canceled. It was gonna be Yamato, Kai, Eita from R.E.D., Big R. Shimizu from R.E.D. Uh, Masato Yosh Yoshino and, and B.B. Hulk. B.B. Hulk. Go to hospital one there from Yamato sends Kai to the ground. Yamato's insecure, he's called go to hospital because he actually sent Rich Swan to the hospital with that move. Look at you learning. I hope uh, Rich Swan's home back in America recovering. I know he's watching right now with that broken leg. It's I miss you over here, buddy, trust me. Ho Ho Loon and Punch, Punch Tominaga in there now. Punch Tominaga is called Punch Tominaga because his hairstyle is called a punch perm. A very what little hair he has left, unfortunately. Ho Ho gets out of the way of that falling headbutt. Sends it for the ride and drop kick catches Tominaga right in the face. Much to the to the delight of the Torimon generation on the right side. Here comes Jimmy getting his first in-ring action since he got back from Japan. Got back from Mexico rather. Against Mondayu. Crowd firmly behind him here. Again, the it's Jimmy's one of those guys that came over here. He's basically a green boy in our system. Spent about six months here last, last year and has improved exponentially on that since that time here. He's gained a lot of weight, bulked up. Body's in better shape. He's just becoming a better and better wrestler every time that he gets in the ring. It's beautiful arm drag. Takes problem dragon over. For those of you that are watching for the first time, Dragon Gate tag teams operate under Lucha Libre rules. 
which basically means that there are no tags needed. If a, if a competitor rolls to the outside, any member of that team can get in there with no tag needed, unlike your traditional American wrestling that some of you might be used to. Problem Dragon sent for the ride now. Takes him down with the back elbow, goes for the cover. Only a one count. Kai tagged in now. Of course, a show like this should probably benefit Mondayu because no one's ever paid to see him at a wrestling show, so. Well, I mean, that's he's a product of your management. Larry Dallas, for those of you that don't know, is a former manager of the Mad Blanky unit back in 2012 here in Dragon Gate. That's how, he's got, that's how he got this job. They forgave him for the product of his management there, Problem Dragon. He's got his name for a very good reason. We are fi five minutes into this match. Dominaga pounding away a little bit. Oh, Mondai. See, Larry Dallas knows him by uh, the Japanese pronunciation, Mondai Ryu. Use it interchangeably. It means problem dragon in Japanese. Yamato pulling on whatever little hair Tominaga has left. Taunting the Torimon fans at ringside. Again, I, I don't know what to say when referring to the referring to the those at ringside. You have to figure they're not just here to watch this show. I mean, they might get involved in this at some point. Well, the only good thing on my end right now is they don't understand half the words I say anyway, so I can't get in trouble for anything I say. A ho ho call erupting from sounded like the right side. Oh, he's got that cravat, no doubt. Something he probably picked up with his time down in NXT in Tampa, Florida, in uh, Tampa, Florida, Orlando, in Orlando, Florida. Orlando. It's time for a Zen style face rake and now a drop kick to the back of the head. Cover from Ho Ho. Only a two. Ho Ho's a veteran, traveled all over the world, all over Asia, Europe. Competed in the Cruiserweight Classic. Was in the Cruiserweight Classic. The, yeah, there's only been one Cruiserweight Classic. It was in Cruiserweight Classic, alongside, representing Hong Kong. Alongside Jason Lee, who we will see in action later tonight. He was originally actually supposed to be in this match on the same team with Ho Ho, but the last minute match change. Kai's out there getting Tommy Naga's biggest fan, Gam Gama, up and excited. Yamato taking exception. <laughs> Double stomp from Problem Dragon. Corner makes the tag to Yamato. Problem Dragon and Yamato, both 2006 debuts. Coming up on their 15 year anniversary next year. You can hear those chops in any language. You don't need an English commentator to tell you what that means. That is blistering, blistering chops, matter, folks. Doesn't matter if there's 50 people or 1,500 people here, you can hear those. Yeah, I'm also saying it doesn't hurt. One thing you do not want to do in life, and I can tell you this from experience, is getting to a strike exchange with Yamato. As Ho Ho gets in there and starts taunting the other team. Speaking of which, maybe you'll, you would notice that certain members of the roster were unable to make it here tonight, Masaki Mochizuki, notably. That's why Larry is still alive. If you'd spent the last three weeks cooped up with him, I'd be doing the show by myself. Mochi's stuck in Tokyo. Sumu Yokosuka as well. Pretty much all of the uh, Dragon Gate members that were that are based in Tokyo are unable to make it here due to the travel restrictions that are in place. As again, fans erupt in a loud punch chant. A win on a show like this, again, we're free for all for the entire world. Punch Tomonaga maybe wants to put his best foot forward. Nice kick to the face. PC kick catches him right in the. Now we're gonna get a. 
PT Rocket. Here comes Kai, the big man, the biggest man on the roster. Just bowls him over. Jamato and Ho Ho, double team. Double clothesline takes them both out. Kai has his origins in the All Japan heavyweight style. Here comes Jimmy. And Jimmy's gonna. Huge, huge Asai Moonsault. Asai Moonsault, obviously popularized by the founder of Torimon. Landed right in the president's lap, Larry. That's not gonna get him a raise. The founder of Torimon, the guy who, who um, invented the Asai Moonsault, Ultimo Dragon, will be in action later on tonight. Teaming with his pupil, Dragon Kid. But now it's down to Jimmy and Ho Ho Loon, our two guests. You just hate it when your roommates fight. Fireman's carry, what's he going for here? Ushigoroshi across the knee. Jimmy wants, has a pretty good chance to kick off his tour with a win. Jimmy's been cooped up for about a week and a half, two weeks, waiting for this opportunity to get in his ring. Gets out of the way there, charges in. Springboard into a stunner. You see that Lucha Libre based influences. Catches him right into a pin, but Problem Dragon makes the save. Burned atomic drop. Coming for, going for the world's fastest neck breaker drop. And Tominaga gets out of the way, a little bit of Matrix action. Bandera. Then sends him up and over. Rocket punch from the outside. Caught him right in the midsection, and now he's punch starting to fire up. Yamato's messing with his pupil. Kota Hospital, too, right into the corner. Which also sent Rich Swan to the hospital. A little bit of fan service there from Yamato before Kai comes in and breaks it up. Here come the two hosses exchanging forearms. Yamato off the ropes of the. Lariat, but walks into one of his own. Nearly took his head off there. Tominaga with the baseball slide. Yamato not known for his lariats. I think he bit off a bit more than he could chew there. And that's good. They get a triple charge into the corner from the, the red corner team. Punch walks into a boot. I, I see uh, Mr. Nakagawa is taking his time off to become a better referee and enforce the rules, huh? Get another rocket punch launch in here. Kai spikes him with the brain buster. Jimmy from. Jimmy up top. Up What's top. he going to do? Swanton bomb. It's going to be a huge win if he gets him. Count along with him. No. Wow. Ho Ho and Problem Dragon make the save. Ho Ho and Mondai basically save Jimmy from getting his. Stop Jimmy from getting the biggest win of his career. Punch goes for the two step moonsault. Yamato gets out of the way. Naga hit a dry pool. Blue corner team now taking advantage. This is a situation where we would normally label them Dragon Gate, R.E.D. Torimon, but this is a mashup of teams. Problem knee right into the corner. Punching a lot of trouble here. Hoho's -Ho got him. Ichinoku driver. Two. Oh, no, he just gets out. Tommy Naga barely kicked out there. As Mondai Yu. Problem drink, maybe going for the problem. What happened? Tommy Naga landed right on his head. That was punching a lot of trouble there. It's going to be more trouble when he gets back to the dojo. That's I don't know who got the worst of that one, to be honest. Fans trying to get behind Punch, but Yamato going for the Galer. Wait a minute. Pulling down Yamato's tights. We're going to get kicked off of YouTube. We're on the wrong U. The crowd. Also not taking too kindly to that sexual harassment from Punch there. You know, the interesting thing that we're that's in play here right now is these guys haven't wrestled for two, three weeks. It's going to be interesting to see how much energy and how much more stamina they have. 
Or if there's any rust. Oh, rolled him up. Got him, punch. Nevado was distracted, had to pull up that full moon. Nevado catches him. That's it. That's called the Galeria. And I think this one's over. Drilled him right on the head is Tommy Naga. Goes down. It's under 11 minutes. Yamato with the Galeria defeats Punch Tominaga here in our opening match at Glorious Gate 2020 from Kobe Sambo Hall. Let's see how Yamato and Kai handle this right now. I mentioned before, these guys are best friends outside of the ring and regular tag team partners. My monitor is stuck in Tokyo too. I don't know how, if you could tell, see on the camera how uh, red Yamato's chest is. You see Yamato, Problem Dragon, ho ho Loon, Victorious. And now, time for a handshake from Yamato and Kai. I'm sure they are going to be looking forward to challenging one, uh, for the Open the Twin Gate Championship again soon. Nice little opening match here for the Dragon Gate crew. If you're watching for the first time, you can watch our archives and watch all of our shows that we air, that we air live on DragonGate.tv. DragonGate.live. What? Dot oh, live. Oh, DragonGate.live. Um, DragonGate.live, we show monthly Cork and Hall shows with English commentary, all of our major shows would have me on commentary also with Lenny Leonard, me and Jay handle Cork and Hall, me, Jay, Jay and Lenny Leonard handle Cork and Hall. And if you're watching for free, you like what you see and you sign up and you're wondering where to start, now would be a great time as the DragonGate 2019 Best Bout Series has been rolling out slowly over the course of March. All of the best matches from 2019 available in one click, so you don't have to worry about well, what show is this match on? Or where on the show is this match? It's one click away. So now is as good a time as any to sign up at DragonGate.live for the DragonGate Network. And we're gonna take it down back to ring, ring announcer Shoki Ono for match number two. This is going to be a three-way match. Coming to the ring first is Dragon Gate Generation member Kota Minoura. He debuted just under two years ago, about a year and a half ago in 2018. 21 years old out of Gifu Prefecture. His nickname is Seven Color Suplexes. And uh, just like the name says on the tin, he is a suplex master. Primarily uses the German, German suplex to great effect as his finishing hold. Coming down next is a 18-year veteran, Kage Tora, part of the Torimon generation. Debuted as a member of the Torimon X class back in 2002. Getting some, can't quite see from here, but getting some sort of gift from Genki Horiguchi, fellow Torimon Generation member. Oh, he was looking for an autograph is what he was doing. Again, his fellow Torimon Generation members are down there on the right side to cheer him on. Kagetori, master technician, he can beat you from anywhere with his Kage Nui flash pin. Also still one of the most explosive members of the roster. But coming to the ring now, one of the scariest and most dangerous men. The greatest play. entrance music in wrestling today, Jay! Kazuma Sakamoto. A man who has also traveled all over the world. You may have saw him as Larry Dallas plays air guitar next to me to the tune of the R.E.D. theme song, Delight Extra Realize, available on all the streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Line Music, Amazon. These are my boys, my crew coming out right now. Kazuo Sekimoto, obviously another former FCW and WWE guy here at Dragon Gate. 
is accompanied by fellow RED members. That is Big R Shimizu with the large blonde hair. The RED leader, Ada, Ata, with his hood up. And then the Brave Gate champion. We open the Brave Gate champion, Kaito Ishida. But the man in this match is Kazuma Sakamoto, one half of the Open the Twin Gate champions alongside BB Hulk. And R.E.D. manhandling Mr. Ito there at ringside. Kazma absolutely hates the green boys. For those of you unfamiliar with Japanese terminology, young boys are basically trainees. Green boys are guys that are just starting out their wrestling career. Kazma is not a fan Kazma's of been the younger the generation world. of pro wrestling. He's learned many, many different styles. He's debuted in Puerto Rico, competed mainly in K-Dojo before traveling to the U.S. to compete in WWE. Masaki Mochizuki once said he is the practitioner of a screwy style of pro wrestling. And Kazuma Sakamoto's reply to that was, the straighter the arrow, the easier it is to break it in half. And right away, Kazuma takes advantage by far the biggest man in this match. Bunch of R.E.D. matches. A lot of times you're gonna see them. They're notorious rule breakers here at Dragon Gate. Like to take the action all over the building. Full of fans or not, we're gonna take a tour around Kobe Sambo Hall. We have no monitors over here, so we're not. Eita hops up on the ring right now to shock Mr. Nakagawa. Kazma brutalizing Minoura. I don't know where Kagetora has gone off to. It looks like Ishida's got him over on the left side. But I need to apologize because we really. We have no idea. We don't have monitors. We're working what we can see at ringside. I want to make sure I give you guys the actual call that what you're seeing. Kazma has Minora right now. Looks like he's going for a vertical suplex down on the floor. Minora fighting it. Kazma has that permanent scowl on his face. Always looks like he's annoyed at what's going Kazma on. Kazma is annoyed half the time. You'd be annoyed too. Kazma, Guy came up from FCW back when that was just a warehouse. Did the indies here in Japan. Kazma actually has been regularly competing around the, the indies that are still operating. Hey, look at that. Nakagawa can count to past 10. They're up to a 15 count again. And he's got his shoes on still. It's a 20 count on the floor. All three men make it back in in time, but Kazma is still firmly in control of this match. <laughs> Kazma can punish you in many, many different ways. He's got vicious strikes, drivers, suplexes. You name it, he can do it. Of course, his size advantage gives him... Kazma probably one of the bigger members of the roster. Deceptively big. Deceptively big. Because we're used to seeing him in FM, or in FCW or on WWE TV. A chorus of boos now. So much for not being a biased crowd. Well, that reaction is universal. It doesn't matter who's in the crowd. R.E.D. Is Minora got punched in that pretty face. That is one good looking kid, man. Do we just like make them out of like a, out of a factory here? Like, because all, all the young kids here at Dragon Gate are good looking, muscular kids. Only Strong Machine J was created in a factory, Larry. That's why I don't go out with any of them. Bunch of good looking. Bad wingmen. Kagetora and Minora now. It's up in a, arm drag takes Kagetora over, and another one. Minora firing up. Minora's got a world of potential ahead of him. This would be a big, big win if he can pin one of the, these big veterans. Minora is here on the Dragon Gate Network. We have a show called Prime Zone, which is a monthly studio show from just down the road in Kobe, Kobe Lapis Hall. 
And he is the backstage host for that. Job, that was originally supposed to be yours, Larry Dallas. It was originally supposed to be mine. One of the many jobs in wrestling I got fired from. Kazma trips Mino Ura up and pulls him down, pulls him back to the floor. Now is this elimination style or is this uh, one fall? Three-way matches are usually one fall, but again, we don't. I don't have a format in front of me, so I'm not. Kagatora sure. hits the ring post. There goes Ichikawa. For those of you who don't know, that's Ichikawa with the uh, Konomama Ichikawa with, 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 with the beer with the bee ears on. He may have ate the stops away on him, rolling over in our direction. Maybe know him as the former stalker Ichikawa. He's the worst wrestler in the world. Ishida working on Kagatora on the floor. So is Eita. Scoop and a slam down from Kazma. Goes for the cover. See, Kagatora is still out of it down on the floor near us. Making his way back to ringside now. Kazma in full control. Kagatora still struggling Come to get in the ring. Come, Come on, on, green boy. I thought he said cutie pie. Oh, he, either label is accurate. That's a cute kid. Look at those blistering chop from the big man. Sends it for the ride. He drop right across the throat from Kazma. Kota's in a lot of pain now. Minora has a homecoming show coming up in Gifu this coming weekend, hopefully. A little triple chin lock here. As fans in attendance are calling for Kazma to go down. Min Minora made the ropes. Kagatora let go of the hold. See, he should have kept that hold on, Ka on Kazma. A double team now for Minora and Kagetora. Drop toe hold. And Camel Clutch setting him up. Resume for a drop kick here. Let's see what he goes for. Drop kick Minora right in the face. I kind of love that. That's what he gets for trusting him. Kagetora, also a 18-year veteran. Yeah. Gonna put his focus onto Kazma now. Minoura tries to recover from that drop kick. Yeah. Yeah. Kagetora, for those of you unfamiliar with him, can basically hit a good roll up out of anywhere for you. Very good at pinning combinations. Good at flash pins, also a very good submission wrestler. He's got both men in a submission predicament now. Bit of a, oh, that, that's Rio Saito cycling Yahoo. But he's got it on both men. I've never seen anything like this before. Minora rolls up to break the hold. A lot of damage done to that arm, though. For a guy that relies on his suplexes. Not as much damage as was done to Kazma's leg. Nobody home for Kagetora. Minora up, up and under. Can't get the advantage though. Right in the face. That open hand slap right to the face of Kazma. I got smacked like that last night. Minora catches him with the water wheel drop. Minora may be getting some momentum on his side now. Be a very big win for Minora. Like I said, Minora is one of those guys that has been basically in the dojo for the past three weeks, doing nothing but working out and training. You follow him on Instagram. Nothing but nothing but peck shots on there these days. Kagatora, Cosmo, obviously went back to their homes. 
had some time off the rest of their bodies. Menor is one of those guys that's really been working out day and night. Going for a double under, double under hook, suplex with the bridge. Cover. Kazma in to break it up. Man, you heard that kick all the way over here from our broadcast booth. Minora is sent to the floor. Kazma may be looking to pick the bones of Kagetora. Very big man coming right at you. Very big and very loud man. Dude, that ring just moved about two inches. What a shining wizard to the back of the head. Cover. Nice two and kick a half. out by Kagetora. His fans get behind Kagetora now. Maybe signaling for that half package pile driver. He's going, he's going for the Michinoku driver first. Kagetora slips out of it, catches him with an Inzagiri. And there's that explosiveness. One of the best diving clotheslines in the business as 10 minutes have passed here. Minori in to break it up. Kage, oh, sweeps the leg. Another open hand slap. Modified Michinoku driver, that spikes him on his head. be it. Minoru showing that spirit. Like I said, you got three weeks off, it goes one or two ways. You're either going to have some little bit of ring rust, or you're going to have a little bit less attrition on your body. So Might be able to withstand, withstand more punishment than normal. Minoru gets out of the Garuma Kakari, sends him into Kazma. Schoolboy. Modified Lamahi Strahl now. Almost got him. There's that, go for that German suplex. That's a lot of weight to get over for a German. Kazma gets out. Walks right into a huge palm strike. Somehow found the wherewithal to kick out. But now, we, now he's signaling for the half package pile driver. Spikes That's gotta be unless Kakator can get in that ring. One. Okay. Two, He's not gonna get there. three, that's Over. it. Kazuma Sakamoto victorious here. That is a big win. <laughs> For one half of the Open, the Twin Gate champions. Just as dangerous in singles action as he is in tags. And the best part about an R.E.D. win is we get the music twice. You find me better music in pro wrestling today and I'll call you a liar. That's gonna be interesting to see what R.E.D. does here now because they're not in the next match, but we've got on the far side, on the entrance side, there's some open seats. Are they gonna stay and watch or are they gonna to head to the back? Up next, we are going to be in we're going to see tag team action. It's going to be the team of Ben K and Keisuke Okuda, or as they're known collectively as Benske, against the team of Jason Lee and Oji Shiba. How come you get a format and I never do? I wrote this myself. Remember, I, I have to type this out for the social media accounts. If you're not following us on Twitter, we are. You can follow us in English at Dragon Gate EN for show information, lineups, links to upcoming streaming shows. Coming to the ring first to Jason Lee's entrance music is going to be the team of Jason Lee and Oji Shiba. They rep together represent the Dragon Gate generation. Jason Lee also a former Cruiserweight Classic competitor. Here comes Oji first. Oji Shiba, obviously the younger brother of Kotoka, former Dragon Gate wrestler. Kotoka, a former, Larry said, a former Dragon Gate wrestler who retired back in 2018. 
Jason Lee, the Hong Kong native, became a full-time member of the Dragon Gate roster last year. Didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this matchup because uh, Machine J was a, was a late was a late pull. That's correct. He was supposed to be in the opener. And then here comes the former Open the Dream Gate champion, Ben K, the man who back at Kobe World in July of 2019 defeated the unbeatable Pac for that title. Pac's first loss in over like 18 months. Myself and my good friend Rich Bocchini from MLW, our partners over in America, were on the call for that. You can find that over at DragonGate.live if you're looking for it. And his partner, childhood best friend, Kaisuke Okuda, the um, MMA style grappler. Mr. Danger Zone, they call him. Wild and unpredictable style. It is Okuda coming out first in the gold trunks with the bleach blonde hair. Following him is one third of the Open the Twin Gate champions, Ben K. Open the Triangle Gate champion. Or Triangle Gate, sorry. In the short black tights. Okuda looks like he spent the better part of his past three weeks in a tanning booth. I was just going to say, the one thing you can't use to tell these two guys apart is their tan. That's actually a personal rivalry that the, these two guys have. They first met each other back in amateur wrestling back in their high school days. They had one match in high school, which was won by Ben K, and one match in college that was won by Okuda. So they were one and one. Eventually, they like to settle that score here in the pro wrestling ring, but for now, oh. they settle for tanning as their comp their competition. All four of these guys part of the Dragon Gate generation. That's why you see all of them are wearing some variation of black and gold, with the exception of Jason. Black and gold are the keynote colors of the Dragon Gate if generation. you've never seen Okuda before, he's very different than your normal Dragon Gate style. He's a guy that's going to use a lot more strike base, like hard kicks, submissions, very MMA style. Okuda debuted in pro wrestling back in 2012 when he was only a junior in high school. Competed briefly for the IGF promotion before quitting pro wrestling to go to college. But he didn't give up. He wanted to get back into pro wrestling, so he worked as a manager of a restaurant and survived by eating the leftover food off the table from his customers when they left for the night. Okuda with that nice cradle there. You're seeing that amateur wrestling background that we talk about from Okuda and, and Ben K. Oji Shiba returned back in October after missing over a year with torn MCL and ACL. It's a long road for him to get back. And since then, he's, he's seen guys like Minora and Dragon Daya passing by in the pecking order. Soccer ball kick. Rapid fire soccer ball kicks. And like I said, if you're watching Dragon Gate for the first time, a little bit of background about what's going on here lately. We have basically three factions at war. We have the Torimon generation, we got the Dragon Gate generation, and we got R.E.D. R.E.D. is hell-bent on destroying the Torimon generation, does not like the fact that Ultimo Dragon is back here, does, thinks that it's time for the older generation to kind of move aside. The Dragon Gate generation, the guys that came post-Torimon, were not Torimon graduates after we split off and formed Dragon Gate, think that basically, you know, that their, that their style, their generation, is the best generation. So what you're seeing here is a lot of factions. The factions here are very important. And here what we got is we got four guys from the Dragon Gate generation basically fighting for a matter of pride. Ben K is one third of the Triangle Gate championship champions. Okuda wants to kind of move up the ladder. Jason Lee wants to get a nice little signature win for himself. And OG's just looking to get his career on track. So a lot of things on the line here in this tag match. Former Open the Dream Gate champion chokes Jason in the corner. Ben Cinching that front guillotine in. That standing guillotine. OG, Jason calling OG in. He's just going to jump in and break it up. Brutal chop by OG, but Ben K, that's like hitting a wall of granite. No effect. One knee lift sends Oji 
crumbling to the mat. You basically got you basically got a, like a red shirt rookie in here right now against the former top champion in this company. Maybe those strikes are starting to have a bit of an effect, and he takes him down with that chop. Ben K. Bach backing him up as Lee gets in there. Obviously that Kung Fu style by Jason Lee. Dragging a generation on the left side of the ring starting to chant for Jason Lee. Can he get him up for this body slam? He tosses him in the corner. Makes the tag to Okuda. Gets the boots to him. Another soccer ball kick. Okuda and Lee, interestingly enough, are both kind of having feuds with uh, Open to Brave Gate champion um, Ishida right now. That is very true. Jason Lee very upset that Ishida kind of uh, turned his back on the old Tribe Vanguard. Yeah, maximum. On the old Maximum, rather. Last year, those guys. Ishida had to cheat to beat Jason Lee back at the final gate 2019, back in December. And then at Champion Gate, which I believe is still up on the network, um, you know, Okuda and Ishida had to be pulled apart in a tag match. And Okuda later took to social media and said, if Ishida wants a fight, then he can bring it anytime, any place. Okuda tends to let his fists and his feet fly before he thinks. It's going to be interesting how the company reacts to the wins and losses here tonight. Everyone's happy to be back to work, but there's still things on the line here. Okuda picking up a win, Jason Lee picking up a win over each other. Really kind of solidifies who might be the number one contender for that championship. we got Dead or Alive right around the corner coming up at the beginning of May. So, yeah, unfortunately, the previously scheduled big show, Memorial Gate in Wakayama, has been postponed indefinitely. So a lot of the matches that, were, that we were heading to there haven't ha been reset, I guess you could say. I'm just gonna, a disrespect from Okuda stepping on Ochi's face. I don't know how that translated on camera, but that punch to that chest, I, I believe it was the chest. I heard that over here through the headphones. Now Oji trying to fire back with some kicks of his own. Yeah, that, that, that Shiba bloodline, not, not really known for their intelligence, you know? Oji firing up. Okuda spent six months into the tutelage of Motosaki Mochizuki and Mochizuki Dojo, where he honed those, those middle kicks. Mochizuki, I call him the Japanese Terminator, might be the scariest man on the planet, Okuda. Tutor, tutored by him, basically. Kuda came to Dragon Gate for one reason and one reason only, to reach the top. What is that? Under Mochizuki's tutelage, he's come a long way towards getting there. Now, he was not trained in the Dragon Gate system, but if his brother Benkei is re fighting to represent Dragon Gate, he wants to fight alongside him. So that's why he fights as a member of the Dragon Jason, Gate generation. Jason Lee cheering on his friend. OG, when I spoke with him, and I spoke with him early, uh, late last night, he had mentioned how nervous he was for this matchup, talking about the level of the competitors he was in with. Basically told me, he goes, everyone else, Sugoi, Sugoi, Sugoi wrestler, me, Shopai. This will drop kick off the top. And then that drop kick right there. Nothing show pie about that nothing one. Nothing show pie about that. See, look at you start to follow my lead. I'll make you a professional after all there, Jason. Jason's the guy in the ring. Jason. Jason, one of the best drop kicks in the business. Rolls in, Jason Lee, the preeminent combination of kung fu and pro wrestling in the world. Oh, could have kind of slipped up there, it looked like. Is he gonna? Got him set in the corner for that drop kick right to the face. Got him right in the upper chest and right in the jaw, it looked like. Okuda, fan of 
wrestlers like Katsuyori Shibata, Kazunari Murakami, wears his influences on his sleeve. Maybe it's gonna be lights out time for Jason Lee. Slips out of it. Kuda counters the Irish whip into a abdominal stretch. OG breaks it up. Ben K is gonna have none of that. Oh, look at that forearm. OG, the second rope. Look at the strength on Benke. Yeah, look at look at the lack of intelligence on OG trying to jump on him. It's gonna take both of these guys to get Benke up for that suplex. Look at unbelievable power. Double. Now Benke double team in OG. Kuda with the back elbow and spear into the corner to skewers Shiba into the into the turnbuckle. Getting spear. Oh, here comes Ben K bomb probably. I guess we could call that the Ben K lift. Oh, sends him over. Soccer ball kick One, right to the two. face. He kicked out of that. How did he kick out? Dragging a generation, trying to cheer him on, but there we go. Ben's going for the Ben's going for the Ben K bomb right now. It looks like gut wrench. Uh, Jason Lee's coming in to break that up. It saves his partner's life. Maybe a couple of moves too late there. Ben's K double team on Jason now. Jason out of the way. Uses his part own partner as a step stool for that swing DDT. Sends Ben K to the floor. OG is somehow still, still conscious. What's he gonna go for? Setting him up here. Taking, taking a sweet time. Shades of his brother with that double stomp. Double stomp on Okuda. Is he gonna get the victory? Can he get him? No. Kuda kicks out at two and a oh, half. Oh, that would have been the biggest victory of his life right there. The biggest win of his family's life. No one home for that screwdriver kick. And that, oh, talk about a missile drop that kick. That dynamite kid drop kick right there. Backdrop suplex spikes Jason. Oh, he's going for the spear. Oh, OG's, OG's done. Swings wildly. V trigger into a backdrop hold. There That's you go. It. The double team work from Benske. Gotta be honest though, hell of an effort. Hell of an effort from OG there. I might actually buy him a drink tonight for that. Tell you what, Benke might be the Triangle Gate champion, one third of it, but him and Okuda. Benske are one heck of a team. That is one hell of a tag team what, right you, there. When you have a, that, that brotherly bond, with someone, even though they are not real life brothers, they consider themselves to be soul brothers. What's your format tell you is up next is you don't get me one. Up next, we are going to be going into tag team action. It's gonna be Torimon versus R.E.D. On the Torimon side, it's gonna be the principal, Ultimo Dragon. The the reason we are all here, teaming with his first protege, Dragon Kid, against the R R.E.D. team of Yo and the Mexican monster, Diamante. I I'm here because Trump closed the borders. Or maybe he closed the borders because he knew it would keep you here. Might be true, too. And uh, this matchup we have coming up is very, very interesting because before we went on, we went on pause. Diamante and Ultimo Dragon had quite a rivalry heating up. Ultimo Dragon challenged him to a uh, mascara versus mascara, right? Lucha de apuestas. Oh. Well, actually, this started back in in uh, December 18th, Corican last year, where Diamante pinned him, scored the pinfall on Ultimo Dragon. Diam Ultimo Dragon followed that up by pinning Diamante on the Torimon reunion show on January 31st. And then on February 7th, Diamante interfered, cost Ultimo Dragon a match. Against Kaito Ishida. 
which led to that, as you said, Diamante called out Ultimo Dragon and said, in the near future, they're going to have to settle their differences in a mask versus mask match. But, Oh, uh, here come the Toriman guys all run into the uh, run into the uh, guardrail. I think Horiguchi wants to get another autograph. That's a big get. People pay top dollar for an Ultimo Dragon autograph. Dragon Kid coming out on his own first. Shaking hands and signing autographs. Dragon Kid's fan service is second to none. Takes the time to make sure every single fan had his hand slapped for his autograph signed. Dragon Kid, one of the Torimon originals. Debuted back in 1997. We're gonna have to cut out for the music here due to copyright reasons. Not many men who can change. This has got to be room. the smallest crowd Ultimo Dragon's worked in front of his entire career. Here comes R.E.D. Ultimo Dragon fresh off another one of his world tours. Took him to Italy, Mexico. Now he is back home here in Dragon Game. Here comes the boys, baby! Kyo and Diamante! Kyo in the vest and the short trunks, obviously. Nick in the Black Panther. Uh, not, maybe not liking the, the, the biased... Uh, the biased crowd. Yo is in a foul mood. His hometown show in Toyohashi was one of the shows that was canceled last week. He was looking forward to 
going back home for the first time as a member of RED. Had new gear made for it and everything. Killing Diamante, former Open the Triangle Gate champions. The Mexican monster, they call him. Yeah, that, that he definitely is. And there he is. The origin of everything here in Dragon Ultimo Gate. Ultimo Dragon probably working in front of the smallest crowd of his entire career. Feel like a Saudi prince. I got a private audience with a bunch of wrestling legends in front of nobody in front of nobody right now, you know? Ultimo Dragon. Return to it Dragon. It didn't even cost me $64 million. Great value. Huh? <laughs> Looks like Hill's probably going to start off for the RED team. <laughs> Double Dragons. Uh, nice reference. Trying to take an exception to R.E.D. at ringside. Of course, the entire Torimon generation are, are just watching as spectators here. Well, R.E.D. are acting as the regular seconds for their team. Dragon Kid, obviously, probably the, you know, the original, one of the most innovative flyers of a generation. That Dragon Runner obviously became absolutely f a famous move. One. Wrestling Observer moved the year several years in a row in the back in the early 2000s. Heavily influenced Ricochet. Him and Ricochet had some absolute classics here for Dragon Gate. Over the Open the Brave Gate Championship. <laughs> Ricochet obviously then had great influence over Will Ospreay. All that can be traced back to basically Dragon Kid in my humble opinion. Which you can then trace back to Ultimo Dragon. Yep. Who was his teacher. Dragon Kid had two had two had two idols in wrestling. Ultimo Dragon, his teacher, and Hayabusa. Which he first came into wrestling, they told him he was too small, so he went to Hayabusa's FMW promotion, and he, where he refereed death matches to save up enough money to join the Ultimo Dragon gym. Saved up to go to Mexico, where he was then given the honor of being Ultimo Dragon's protege, given the dragon name. Kyo up and over. Beautiful head scissor. And Hyo's gonna have to get out, get out of there. Is he gonna fly? No. Here comes he, Diamante though. He, want, he wants to get his hands on Ultimo Dragon. And here we go, the RED special. We're about to go all around the building. Good luck to my commentary right now. I have no idea what the hell we're looking at. Joe has Dragon Kid over in, I guess it would be enemy territory for him, but again, putting the boots to Konomama Ichikawa. Eita throws a chair at Ichikawa. Oh, yeah. Diamante and Dragon are on, are on our left side. Ichikawa's just getting pulverized with chairs. Over what is that, what is this is how Gordon Soley felt every time it broke down like NWA Championship Wrestling Florida or something. See, we've got cameras on both sides too, so I don't know which one they're following. Oh, you just figured out that part? No, I'm just bringing it up. Oh, okay. I, my guess is they're on Diamante and Dragon. That's my guess right now. Diamante back up on the apron. He would love to well, end Ultimo Dragon again clean in the middle of the ring. This would be a good time to probably explain to you guys that Ultimo Dragon came back to Dragon Gate last year at Kobe World, had his first match ever in a Dragon Gate ring. Obviously, he's the, he's the reason. The, the reason why we had our 20th anniversary last year was because Ultimo Dragon, to count Torimon as part of 
the um, Dra Dragon Gate has its origins. The anthology here. As Torimon Japan back in 1999. Exactly. That history is included when we talk about the Dragon Gate history. We're now in the 21, the 21st year. Last year we celebrated the 20th anniversary. And it was Masato Yoshino who thought no better way. I mean, there would be no greater guest to have come in and celebrate than the man that started it all. Arm drag takeover by Ultimo Dragon. And Tagiri sends Siamante to the floor. Dragon first came in on a guest basis at Pro Wrestling Festival in Kobe. It was at a dangerous gate 2019 where he was invited by Masato Yoshino. We have yet to see Dra Ultimo Dragon hit that famous Asai Moonsaw since he's been back here at Dragon Gate. I would absolutely lose my mind if he does it here. But no better, no better time than now. Knee drop into a long handstand into another knee drop from Dragon Kid. The core strength on Dragon Kid is unbelievable. Yeah, you know he practices that. You know you can see him sometimes when I'm with him. He tie, he ties a, a strap around his head with a ball hanging down and practices his hand-eye coordination by punching the ball and seeing on a string and seeing how long he can keep it going. Kill out of the way, he ripped that turnbuckle pad off and Dragon Kid ran right into that exposed po that hook and holding the ropes in place. Don Fuji very angry at, over at ringside. A chorus of boos raining down. I think Ultimo Dragon trying to encourage Konomama Ichikawa to get in the ring. Don Fuji obviously, uh, um, you know, owns a self-defense school here in Japan. Ichikawa was the first graduate. I see Ichikawa in the ring right now. Sit up. And, well, th there's a reason Ichikawa didn't have a match tonight. I think we just saw it. Five minutes have passed now in this tag team match. Mate and Hyo have total control on Dragon Kid in the corner. Kongo opened the Triangle Gate champions together. They lost those championships back on February 29th at Champion Gate in Osaka. So you have Benkei, Dragon Daya, Strong Machine J. That's just adding to the frustration that these two have. Hyo debuted in 2016. The nickname is the Black Panther. Two reasons. One, because his name, Hyo, means panther in Japanese, but also because he is quick as a cat. I thought you said it was because he liked tanning. Well, that too. Hey, Quite a beard going there, too. Hey. Hey. Uh, using his downtime productively, I can see. I'm glad you filled me in on, what, uh, on why they call him the Black Panther, so that next time I see him, I don't go Wakanda forever, and he looks at me all crazy. Kyo is one of those kids I think has a very bright future in his company. Very charismatic, full of personality. Struggled to find his place last year as a member of Mochizuki Dojo. Made multiple attempts on the Open the Triangle Gate Championship where he failed. That frustration led to him snapping and turning, turning to the dark side, joining R.E.D. Which I, I don't know how an empty building with 20 people booing became deafening, but it did. It like echoes off the roofs here. Diamante going after the mask on Dragon Kid. Obviously, if you pull off the mask, it's much like Lucha Rules. If you pull off a competitor's mask, you will be disqualified. Instant, instant DQ, but I don't think he had any intention of actually pulling it off. He just wants to get under Ultimo Dragon's skin. Sounds like a baseball bat shot. The good thing through all this is the Mets are still undefeated, so. And the Knicks aren't going to lose 50 games this year. Uh, did, did Lenny Leonard feed you that line? Dragon Kid sent for the ride. Gets out of the way. Diamante sends him up and over. Bandera by Diamante. Over. There's that head scissor lands on his feet. Look at the agility of Dragon Kid. I literally lost him in the lights there. I wonder if that affected Diamante. And now the principal is in. Those double chops blistering the chest of Hyo. Dragon with the drop down. Off the ropes, back elbow to Hyo. 
There you see that veteran ability. Ultimo Dragon has a counter for everything. Using Diamante as a base to take over Hill with that head scissor and Diamante with the headlock takeover. That's Prince will just tell him to bring it. He's got that leg trap. Dragon screw, leg whip takes Hyo over. Principal in full control now. Principal Dragon, of course, has a variety of submission holds that he can hurt you with, and I think we're going to see one of them here. Points right at Diamante. This one's for him. We're going to wind it up. That reverse figure four is absolutely brutal on your body. Dragon Kid with the Cristo on Diamante. Look at the strength on Diamante. Carries Dragon Kid across the ring to break up the submission hold before dumping him with that sidewalk slam. Diamante spends about two hours every single day working out. Doesn't matter if it's hot, cold, raining, snowing. So it's a world backbreaker and then rewinds it into a stomach crusher. Now, look at, oh, look at the strength. Presses him overhead. Just drops him like it's garbage day here in Kobe. Yo sets him up. What's he gonna go for? Sent on off the second rope, nobody there. Princip the principal is tagged back in. Here comes Dragon. The entire, all of Kobe Sambo Hall erupts in the Dragon chant. <laughs> Ultimate Dragon content. Going for that Mahi Strong move? No. Totally missed that call. Both of us did. Drop toe hold. Now he's going for Here it. Here comes. A little late. Breaks it up much to the dismay. Wait a minute. Here come the boys. Big R Shimmy's just got Mr. Nakagawa distracted down in the corner. And R.E.D. For those of you who have never seen R.E.D. before, this is very typical of what you can expect. But turnabout is fair play as the Torimon generation. Rio Saito, Konimama Ichikawa. Don Fuji, Shachi Hoko Boy, Kuness, Yasushi Kanda, Super Shisa. Every single person watching this for free for the first time on YouTube that hates AEW is absolutely losing their minds right now. Dragon Kid off. Messiah DDT spikes Yo right on the top of his head. Diamante, no choice but to come in and take over. Diamante hits the rope. Dragon sends him. All the way over the top rope, crashing to the floor. Kid maybe setting him up for the Ultra Hurricane Rana. Can you get him? No, uh, Hyo gets out of the way. No, oh, he got the cut. Rolls through. Can you get him up? But Orpha countered into the Bible. He got him. Nice victory by Dragon Kid. Yo is incredulous right now. Apoplectic almost. Just like that. Yo is going for, he calls that the Orpha. It's a fireman's carry into Diamond Cutter. But Dragon Kid had it, you say he had it scouted. He countered it into the Bible. But Diamante now taking his frustrations out on Ichikawa again. Tell you what, out of all the, all the guys here, Ichikawa doesn't have a match, but he's taking the biggest beating out of anybody. But Obviously tensions between Diamante, Dragon Kid, and Ultimo Dragon have not gone any, gotten any better with our time off. So we're gonna have to go and go one on one sooner than later.
I'm going to jump it up and down like an idiot. Ringside. He grew, he grew up a big fan, you know, of Ultimo Dragon. Oh, Eitan Diamante are beating up somebody. I would, I would assume it is Kono. Yeah, it is, in fact, Kono Mama Ichikawa. It is pandemonium here. Just broke it out to a full bounty brook. It's a Pier 6 brawl. R.E.D. Not, not happy. But they're going to have to go backstage very quickly and focus because they're going to have to come right back out here because... BB Hulk and Takashi Yoshida will be out in the next match representing R.E.D. against your favorite tag team's favorite tag team, Naruki Doi and Masato Yoshino. You know them as Speed Muscle, you know them as Doi Yoshi, whatever you call them. The most influential and greatest tag teams in pro wrestling history. Coming up next. The whole ringside area has been destroyed. Semi-final RED Taitorium Takumachi 45 Fun Showbu will be held. First, Taitorium Yoshino Masato Doinaru Kikumi will be announced. Here comes the champ. Yeah, baby, a little Spanish music to get the dancing going. To the Latin stylings of the Torimon Generation entrance music episodes. Commotion going on on the other side. Looks like it's the Torimon Generation on the left side, Dragon Gate Generation on the right. Might get a fan riot here going on on the other side. I have no idea what's going on over there. The oh, we got a fight going on. Don, Don Fuji taking it to, looks like, Punch Tominaga. I came to a Dragon Gate show. I ended up in a Philadelphia Eagles game. Fans are all fighting in the crowd. The speed star, Masato Yoshino. And his tag partner, the reigning and defending Open the Dream Gate champion, Naruki Doi. You know, we really need to get better security around here. Obviously, Masato Yoshino is retiring this year due to a neck injury. The date is still uncertain. And here comes BB the Lunatic. Representing R.E.D., one half of the Open the Twin Gate Champions, B.B. Uh, Hall. Trey, he's got the chain. Coming out first, Takashi Yoshida, the man who has oh, hell. slowly drifted into insanity. Oh, he went after the president with the chains. Unbelievable. The president does not look happy. Yeah. Yoshida, he's, he's got a hold of somebody now, too. Oh, he's got a hold of Kenta Kobune. Again, there's... He told Kobune that he, his face annoys him, that he's going to make his life miserable, and he's doing just that. Kobune, one of our newest debut, debut, debuting wrestlers here. Dragon Gate fan, maybe you remember Takashi Yoshida as Cyber Kong. That cameraman might want to get out of the way. It's just an idea, Gayora. And with the long flowing red hair, that is BB Hulk. 
Well, they, told, they told us to keep the volume of our voice down. I don't think Yoshida got the memo. I didn't either, apparently. If I was Mr. Nakagawa, I wouldn't take that mask off, that Lecter mask. Like I was saying, Yoshino's retiring this year. Masato Yoshino suffered a, what was thought to be at the time a career-ending neck injury back in 2017. Doi Arkern opened the Dreamgate champion. Yoshino returned from that injury in only three months. A miraculous recovery. John Cena's got nothing on him, but unfortunately the wear and tear has caught up to him. The doctor told him if he changed his style, he could go for an indefinite amount of time. But D Doi. they call him the speed star for a reason. He probably, if you put Usain Bolt in a ring or you put wrestling ropes around the track, Yoshida would beat him in a foot race. There's not a doubt in my mind. So, the fastest man I've ever seen in my life. Rather than slow down, Yoshida chose to go full speed all the way to the end. He said he's going to retire sometime in 2020. The date is not set. Sure, with all the recent cancellations, he would hate for that to be the way his career ends. He was also in line for a shot at the Open the Triangle Gate Championship, along with Yasushi Kanda and Don Fuji, in a match that has now been postponed indefinitely. And those educated feet of B.B. Hulk. Perhaps the, the most dangerous man on the Dragon Gate roster. Is oh, he went out! Going after Ichikawa again! Yoshida goes at the Ishino's neck. B.B. Hulk, no stranger to neck injuries himself. He suffered a broken neck back at the end of 2018 at the hands of Kai. Kai then took BB Hulk's place and tried Vanguard to fill in the gaps. Here comes the champion. Doi won the title back in December in what I think was an absolute classic, maybe one of the best matches I've ever been live in a building for, defeating Ben K. Went on to defend that title so far against KZ, Cork, and Hall in February in a fantastic matchup. And then against Susumu at Champion Gate on March 1st, right before we got shut down through the coronavirus that has everyone inside right now. Doi so far putting together a wonderful championship reign. He's called out anybody, anytime, if you want a title shot. He is planning on spending his entire 20th anniversary as a champion, as a fighting champion. So anyone that wants a title shot is welcome to come out and challenge him. No one has stepped up yet. He's got Takashi Yoshida on the mat now. Doi and Yoshino together. Preeminent tag team of the early 2000s. They created the Open the Twin Gate Championship just to give them something to fight over. They held those championships on three separate occasions. They won the Summer Adventure Tag League three times. Oh, that shut up thrust. Yoshida told you something. That's the only thing he knows how to say. That is not true. I worked with the man for three months. Another one of your former protégés. Exactly. You can see the mental state he was left in after having to work with you. The most successful part time of his career is with me. He hasn't sniffed the main event of a big show since then. BB Hulk, obviously a former Japanese Special Forces. They would just they take, him, take you out into the forest and drop you there and tell you to survive until they come back and get you. Yeah. The survival tactics. Another there. one of my former protégés here in Dragon Gate, BB Hulk. Man warms up before the show by kicking the ring post as hard as possible. BB Hulk betrayed. Perhaps one of the scariest things you'll ever see in person. BB Hulk betrayed Tribe Vanguard to join R.E.D. at the end of 2018. Took exception to Yamato buddying up with Kai, the man who broke his neck. turned on and becoming a member of R.E.D. and he's tapping back into that dark side, but he's in trouble now. Yuriki Doi off the top of the double axe handle. And I think I know where this is going. Doi is gonna wind him up. The ceilings are low here in Kobe Sambo Hall. That double stomp of that arm is gonna do you no favors. Unbelievable elevation. Doi's, Doi's Bickering with the Dragon Gate generation over there. Here comes Fuji. Yoshida making a lot of noise. There's chaos at ringside. I feel like a TV reporter, like, 
the middle of, middle of a storm. So, yeah. I'm trying to think of one thing I couldn't say that wouldn't like offend somebody. Storm is a good word. Yoshida is raking at the eyes. They call, they call Yoshida the muscle beast. Back elbow. And he gets a classic speed muscle action here. Drops hold from Doi into this, the basement drop kick from Yoshino. I'll take Doi and Yoshino in their prime against any tag team in the world at any point in history. Again, distracted by the Torimon generation on the, or the, sorry, the Dragon Gate generation on the left side of the ring. If, you, if you're watching for the first time here, you know, because you're, because you're locked in due to the pandemic, checking out some free wrestling on YouTube, we thank you. You can subscribe and watch more Dragon Gate at dragongate.live. Let me tell you something about some of the guys that have come through this company, the Young Bucks, Kevin Owens, Jack Evans, Rich Swan, Ricochet, Pac. Uha Nation, I mean Apollo Crews, Akira Tozawa, Daga. As action now once again going all over the place, and I'm gonna have no idea what camera shot they're showing you guys. At this point, it's pretty safe to say if the action goes down to the floor, it means Konamami Chikawa is getting beat up. <laughs> Rio Saito over here on the right side is trying to cheer Naruki Doi on while Yoshida's again distracted and going after Kento Kobune. Kobune's. I'm literally living like West Side stories. Everyone's fighting with each other and it's just chaos in this arena. There she does. I have a gut feeling that this show is not going to end well. Now, Yoshida's got Kobune. Kento Kobune in the ring. Obviously, he kidnapped Kobune a couple of shows ago. I mean, they, they've been going at Yoshida. Had a singles match with him last time we were here in Kobe Sambo Hall. Afterwards, Yoshida told him that he hates his face. He annoys him, and he's going to make his life miserable. Oh, arm drag by the kid! Counters the pineapple bomber. Go, young boy, go! That's what Yoshida gets for taking his eyes off of off of the prize here. Got distracted. How nice. It's like an authentic American wrestling crowd. we got Ben K sitting there with the belt on. He does, doesn't he? Currently one third of the Open the Triangle Gate Championships. That is not a replica. BB Hulk's got a, got Yoshino and a half crab as, as Yoshida pounded, a, stomping away on that bad neck. By announcing his retirement so early, Masato Yoshino put a giant bullseye right on his neck. Anyone from RED or the Dragon Gate generation would love to be the ones that retire him. Baby Hulk really wrenching back. Yoshino very close to the ropes. Nakagawa a little distracted. Here comes Yoshida kind of chase up, pushing the ropes away. Put some distance between Yoshino and Doi. Now he gets the ropes. Many, many wars. Elbowing away at that neck once again, targeting it almost. Big spin wheel kick there from BB Hulk. Talk, we talked earlier about Okuda Misaki Mochizuki has the most powerful strikes in Dragon Gate. BB Hulk probably has the most precise. Absolutely. BB could kick a fly out of the air. It's kind of a Got him by the nose. Uh, trying to rearrange his face. Yoshida, what's he gonna do here? Uh, just scraping him across the ropes. Yeah, well. As the crowd approves. Now, again going after that bad neck. Oh, really cranking on. That's a powerful man right there. Trained at the Inoki Dojo in California for a period before coming to Dragon Gate. 
First product of the Dragon Gate USA system back in 2006. Came over as the first protege of Shingo Takagi. Has been a regular ever since. Multiple time open the Twin Gate, open the Triangle Gate champion. It's Orimon generation. Trying to hype up Yoshino, get him out of trouble here. Complete shot, Yoshino, Yoshino with the standing body press comes crashing down as 10 minutes have passed here in this tag team match. Another Yoshino chant erupts here at Kobe Sambo Hall. PV. Yoshino has brutal chops, obviously a very good baseball pitcher here in Japan. He's got that arm strength. His, his chops come, after, come at you with the speed of a 90 mile an hour fastball. He likes to go for those overhand chops for that reason, mimic that pitching motion. Oops, there's the swinging neck breaker drop, the innovator of that hold. He needs to make a tag now, and in comes the Open the Dream Gate champion. Here comes the champ. Boy reverses. Chops down the tree. Here comes Here Bibi. Comes Nobody there except his partner. Bibi took out his partner there. Doi. Going to stack him up for the cannonball. Well, Here comes Ichikawa. R.E.D. was clearly going to try and interfere there, so Doi rightfully got the referee on and. Concho from Konomama Ichikawa, right on the mark. That is not a pleasant move to take. Yoshino try, going for another space here. Can he get him up? He does! Cover. Yoshino, Yoshida kicks out at two and a half. Crowd chanting for both Doi and Yoshino now. Flurry of thrusts from Yoshida. The double pineapple bomber sends Doi and Yoshino to the mat. Now he's gonna make the tag into BB Hulk. Nice kick to the bread basket. Brazilian kick to the back of the head. Another Savak kick followed by a ax kick. Sweeps the leg, penalty kick, no, ax kick, right to the, to the crown of the head. The other half of the open, the Twin Gate champions, ruling the ring, set pump handle, maybe going for the EVO. Doi slips out behind. Yoshino with that insecurity, calls it the Champion Carnival 2019, H Edge. Oh, that's sent on. That's a lot of meat coming down in your rib cage. with the sent on. It's going to take more than that to put the champion away, though. Yeah. It'd be cyberbomb time. Not uh, picking him up, no. Can he get him? He's not getting a champ up like this. Gets him with it, it's over. Here Champion comes. or not, you don't kick out of the cyber bomb. The Doi escaped. The athleticism by BB on display. Here comes Yoshino. Oh. So drop kick right to the inside of the knee, the thigh. That's one way to neutralize those kicks. Oh, I spoke too soon. It's a more classic speed muscle with a double team flapjack face buster. Speed muscle in control now. Yoshino off his back. It's Orbelino. He's singling for it. It's still Nasciente time. But wait, wait a minute. Here come the boys. Gonna have to call for the DQ there, Nakagawa. What are you doing? Nakagawa gets thrown down. And R.E.D. and that's gonna be a disqualification. Now, you know, Larry, I, I can kind of understand this on a regular occasion because R.E.D. takes great pleasure in sending the fans home unhappy. But 
is uh, Ace is gonna, gonna tombstone Yoshino. Doi in to make the save. But I think RED interfering here is pretty a pretty clear sign that they can feel uh, that they And the Dragon Gate crew is helping out here too. Well they, they Yamato's in there fighting with Shimizu Eta. They should they should. Here comes Kai. Oh dude. Again, you know, Yamato and Kai, no love lost between them and BB Hulk. Oh yeah, yeah, BB and, and Kai are going at it. These were our six guys in our cork and ha main event that we didn't get. Exactly. It didn't take very long for them to get back in. Aita wondering exactly what they're doing in the ring. Oh, it's a wonder exactly when Yoshino does intend on retiring. Oh, I don't agree with that. Ada's saying that nobody nobody wants to see Yoshino wrestle anymore. They're tired of him. Well, it's uh, saying that hey, RED is in the main event here tonight, and everyone that's in the match is ready, so let's get their opponents out there. It's going to be representing RED, it's going to be eight uh, Big R Shimizu, and our Open the Brain Gate champion, Kaito Ishida. And they're going to be facing off with the Dragon Gate team of KZ. Dragon Daya, one third of the Open the Triangle Gate champions. And Yosuke Santa Maria. Oh, Aita spit right. You can't do that when there's an outbreak. Taking no, no love lost there. Aita, the former pupil of Dragon like, Kid, before he betrayed him. But Dragon Daya is Dragon Kid's student. Okay. Kaito Ishida. Oh, that cameraman's about to be in trouble. We're off to a flying start here in our main event at Glorious Gate 2020 from Pokemon. Uh, here we go. Hall. All hell's about to break and, loose. And Konomami Ichikawa is about to get beat up again. Uh, on the RED side, we have the, the uh, group's uh, leader, Eita. I'm not sure where the camera's at right now, so I'm just going to introduce the match. Good. You do that. I'm going to try to stay out of stay out of harm's way over here. And then, with the blonde hair in the the long pants, is Big R Shimizu. And with the bleach. Oh, and Keisuke Okuda is taking it right to the Brave Gate. I it. told you about Okuda and Ishida earlier today. That rivalry. Oh, God. Ada's getting too close to me. Soccer ball kick from Kaito Ishida. His nickname, entrance music, is just a kick boy. And just like on the tin. Anthony Moore is hiding Anthony behind w. me now. Anthony Moore is coming to seek refuge. His, his, his one night return was one night only last year. Punch Tominaga is also somehow involved. Larry Dallas, try, put that chair down, Larry. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, shit, I got you, buddy. No. Oh. See, that? he doesn't well, like he, you at all. He told you what to do with that chair. He, he doesn't did. like you at all. It's, 
I got my chair here to protect myself. Uh, R.E.D. likes to say that they control Dragon Gate, and they are controlling this six-man tag team match here. All right, looks like we're back in the ring now. That is KZ, who they have singled out. KZ's in a world of trouble. Oh! Sandwich, penalty kick, soccer ball kick from Ishida and Eita. Here comes our exotico uh, Yosuke. Yosuke Santa Maria. For our, mi for our mixed tag main event here. A lovely fighter. So you make it out with her last night. She's a very beautiful lady. Charge in. Big one tackle off the second rope from Big R Shimizu. That American football background show. Look at the strength. Catches Dragon Die out of midair. There you go, Big Sexy. You do your thing, Shamiz. And a fall away slam over the top rope sends Dragon Dia into the lap of the Dragon Gate generation. His the favorite wrestlers are Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. He just he's pulled, he's honored Scott Hall right there with that one. Yeah, fall away slam where you're so strong, you don't even need to actually fall away to do it. Exactly. Unbelievable. Favorite football team is the Buffalo Bills, my hometown. That one I can't figure out. Neither can I, to be honest. And it's KZ now. Back in there with the Brave Gate champ. Ashita now, you're gonna see Ashita. Ashita has lethal, lethal strikes also. Not just kicks, chops, suplexes. And one of the worst attitudes in the company. I kinda like his attitude. Take no prisoners, take what you want in life. He trade Maximum back in October after, or sorry, November, after winning the Open the Brave Gate Championship to be, to, to join R.E.D. felt that Maximum wasn't taking things seriously. Maximum was a unit that he was in with Naruki Doi, Masato Yoshino, and Jason Lee, and Dragon Kid. He was tired of hearing about Ultimo Dragon, Ultimo Dragon, as it's now Big R Shimizu and Yosuke Santa Maria. Now here comes the big boy. And Knocking her down. Yosuke maybe not gonna wanna take the full frontal approach here. Someone like Big R Shimizu, Eita makes the tag in. There we go, Eita on full control. Uh, Definitely a compromising, a embarrassing. compromising the position there. Get the cameras off of that. We get kicked off of YouTube. Oh, and he's pulling it up uh, tighter. Oh, here comes the Oh, this is gonna go good. Okay, Casey. Oh! Duh. There's nothing good about that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't what? matter what you got down there. It hurts when you get kicked there. That'll break whatever equipment you have. You should just step in on Yosuke Santa Maria's face. The disrespect from Ishii hasn't even bothered to take his T-shirt off yet. That's how serious he's, he takes Yosuke Santa Maria as an opponent. Yosuke is definitely a formidable competitor. Yosuke, former Open the Brave Gate champion in her own right, so he would not be wise to underestimate her. Standing drop kick right to the face. Yosuke, also one of the best drop kicks in wrestling. She's gonna make the tag to, looks like Kate, no, it's, Daya, Daya's coming in. Here, here comes the infinite carrot diamond, Dragon Daya, who has been on an absolute tear, perhaps the hottest wrestler in the world right now. I can't remember the last time he's taken a fall. You're the encyclopedia. Only once since November, and that was with heavy RED interference. But that reptilian Rana, of his has scored him many, many, many pins, including the direct pinfall of Rio Saito to win the Open the Triangle Gate Championship. Don't want to strike with Ishida, though. Becoming a champion 15 months at, into his career. And oh, Kuda getting involved. Oh, I told you those two were going at it lately. Could have seen enough. And Ishida is sent flying all the way to the back. And this, we're gonna, this one's going to break down again. 
Closer to our side now, we've got KZ and Big R Shimizu. We don't underestimate KZ. He's called KZ because he's crazy. She had just sent, KZ's going nuts. She had just sent Okuda into the post. Kyo's got Yosuke again. The entire roster's fighting each other right now around the building. So, Super Shisa, Yasushi Kanda enjoying the, enjoying the show. But Dragon Daya and Eita are paired off. KZ and Shimizu are fighting over suplex at ringside. Benkei is over here to encourage his triangle gate partner as he takes it to Eita. KZ eats a post. Again, we have no idea exactly what you folks at home are seeing right now. Got, you know, Shida's got his chain. I'm sure you can hear it no matter what you're looking at. Yosuke just hit a ring post. Kabune's going after Yoshida. This is, this is complete and utter chaos. Back in the ring, it's Eita and Dragon Daya. That sound you just heard was Kabune's chest getting caved in by Yoshida, too. The low blow from Eita to Dragon Daya on the inside. Has anyone checked on the president? Is he all right still? I don't see him. I think he... Oh, no, there, I see him. He's okay. But Dragon Daya certainly is not. Hey, to tell the Torimon guys, their matches are done. They can get out of here. You know what happens on the Indies when there's a light crowd like this, right? The president of the company usually fakes an injury and disappears before the pay, the pay window opens up. You know, you got to be careful around these times. Oh, we, we, we've, we've had different management here since the middle of 2018, and things aren't like that here in Dragon Gate anymore. A shit with a brutal kick. So the cover, Daya gets out. As the Dragon Gate generation tries to start a Dragon or a Daya chant to encourage Daya to get out of there, make a tag. He should use utilizing the entire four count before breaking. Makes the switch to Big R Shimizu now. Is Diamante just pulling Dragon Daya back by the mask. Pulling back by the tail. It's a lot of weight to have come sitting down on your chin. Hey, Nakagawa shouldn't be grabbing a talent like that. We're gonna see another, another show of strength from Shimizu and another fall away slam, and again, you didn't even have to fall away to do it. Follows it up with, he calls that otakebe, which means war cry in Japanese. 10 minutes have passed here in our main event. Shimizu maybe the most charismatic person in Dragon Gate. <laughs> Former shot put players, finisher is the shot put slam. Oh, do you know what's coming slam. up right now, baby? Yeah, Shimizu. Triple power bomb, maybe. No, oh, Frankensteiner, he gets out of it. But R.E.D.'s blocking the corner. Can he get under? He does. Makes the tag to Yosuke Santa Maria, who comes flying in. Missile drop kick to both Ishida and Eita. And now KZ. Dragon Generation. Here we go. Here time comes the take, danger. Time to take to the sky. Stereo Tope Suicida from KZ and Dragon Daya. I love Ono yelling to tell the crowd to get out of the way. And now time for Punch to fly, maybe. Could it be? Huge. I'll say he moves up by punch. Is it Yosuke Santa Maria's turn? Nope, she's going to wait. She wants Eita. These two debuted against each other back in 2011. They are 
Dojo Pierce, contemporaries, their careers obviously have taken very different paths. But these two know each other better than anyone. Trading shots, both of these guys. They practiced chopping each other when they were coming up. Eight to the original king of chop. But Yosuke Santa Maria, not undeterred. Gets the better of that strike exchange. Vertical suplex. He's going to get the advantage here. The other side can get it. Aita, no. Yosuke. Yosuke with the vertical suplex gets her, wins that exchange. Shimizu in to break it up. KZ now. Maybe going for the beat bomb, trying to get him up. That is a heavy, heavy man. I don't know if he's going to be able to, and he can't. Shimizu, the powerhouse. But no oh, ball. right on the ring post. Forehead to the ring post. This is a chance. Can he get him up? No. Shimizu slips behind. That European uppercut. Third, the third time be a charm for KZ. He's got him up. Beat bomb right in the center of the ring. Can he get him? No, Shimizu kicks out. KZ now is going to go for, is for another one of those elbow strikes in the corner. Shimizu bails. Oh, oh wow, look at the, the power. Good for the bad boy at the top. Shimizu caught him in midair. KZ slipped out though. There's another one of those European uppercuts. Ishida in to make the save. Daya back in now. Oh, blister and chop. And chop echoes throughout Kobe Sambo Hall. Oh. Look at the quickness on Dragon Daya. To the big springboard body press. Now up a, he spikes it with that swinging DDT. The Brave Gate champion is in trouble here. The Dragon Gate generation has taken over this match. The triple team in the corner now. European uppercut, we're gonna go around again for the shotgun in the corner from KZ. And now Yosuke using KZ as a springboard. A somersault sent on, we've never seen that before from KZ. Daya follows up with Firebird Splash. Oh man, almost got the victory over the Brave Gate champion. Shimizu in there, had to make the save for his partner. Oh, but Shimizu with a huge spine buster. Shimizu's been on a little bit of a losing streak, be streak before our break. Yeah. Finally picked up the world to win a champion gate. Yeah, Aita told him to get his act together. It's the most cohesive RED's looked in a while. Well, you know, the time off maybe gave them some cooler heads and prevailed. In three weeks, not once did one of them invite me to dinner. Maybe power bomb again. Oh, last ride style. Eita and Shimizu, of course, former Open the Twin Gate champions. To me, my favorite tag team of last year. Super charismatic, super, like just a well-oiled machine, these two, when they're on the same page. It's almost halfway across the ring. It's all right, he got this. I can't see with the light in my face. Flying sausage! Comes crashing down on Dragon Daya. And very fortunately for Daya, KZ was able to come in and make the save. I don't know how fortunate you are to have to continue on after someone lands on you like that. 
Shimizu catches him. Another power. This boss beast. man slam. It's up to Yosuke now. Almost took her head off. He's fired up. She's she hulking up right now. Throwing lariats at Big R Shimizu. Maria getting another drop kick. She says she's got this. No, look at the slaps to the face. Well, Larry, you know what it's like to be slapped in the face like that by a beautiful woman. Especially around here in Santa Mia. Can she get it, Naraya? Hey! She's got him! No, no, no! She got him! Right in the middle of the ring! Oh, Aitz is not going to be happy. Big, big win for Yosuke Santa Maria. Here in the main event of Glorious Gate 2020. And R.E.D., not just Eita. Oi, Shimizu! Oi, Narimaki Jinza, yo! Eita uh, telling Shimizu that maybe he should feel degraded after that losing to Dragon Daya, Yosuke Santa Maria. Shimizu's done nothing but lose. Wants to hear none of it from the Dragon Gate side. Again, Eita telling Big R Shimizu to get his act together. Oh. Shimizu apologetic, but. Oh, she just got something to say now. Uh, they want their GHC tag title match they were promised. Yoshi and Diamante, they, they still want that match. Well, of course, the pro wrestling world GFC tag champions are Masaki Mochizuki and Naomi Chimara Fuji. Well, Mochizuki said he would be watching today on the network, so there was a challenge from Yoshida. Mochi's been tweeting about the show all, all night. Yoshida and Diamante want that GHC title match on April 8th in Corican Hall. It's the quietest R.E.D. has ever left. He's looking forward to getting Marafuji to shut, he's gonna shut Marafuji up. Well, I literally expected this to end a lot more violently. I'm very happy with the way this is going right now. I think R.E.D. has bigger fish to fry internally at this point. Uh, here comes the Torimon guys getting up. Here comes, well, Fuji's leading the way. Fuji and Kanda, of course, and Yoshino. They had, back in Osaka, they had challenged the new champions to a Triangle Gate title match. And F Fuji tried kicking at Yamato. That match was never set up, but of course, all, any talk of new matches has been delayed, so maybe they're coming in to see when they're gonna get their shot. And he's calling Benke into the ring. Can't call the machine in. He's in for maintenance. 
トレーヌルゲートのチャンピオンお前とダイヤマシンジェイカー俺がな前この前大阪で挑戦表明して神田よしの挑戦表明したけどトライアングルゲートも決まってない決まってないっていうことはなお前言葉忘れてないよなお前ら近いうちにやるって言ってたよな Well, Don Fuji said that the champions did say that it would have the match would happen sooner than later, so I think he's going to、uh, Fuji says he wants it to be sooner, not later. Fuji says he wants it to be sooner, not later. Fuji says he wants it to be sooner, not later. タイトルマッチどうや4月5日名古屋国際会議場あったよなそこでお前らに挑戦したろやないかどうやチャンピオン、uh, Yoshino wants the match for April 5th in Nagoya、uh, at Nagoya Congress Center 神田よしの藤井のさんあダイヤとジェイコこの俺がトライアングルゲートチャンピオンだ。おい、いつでもどこでもやってやるよ。Well, Benke saying anytime, any place, be happy to beat up these old timers. お前なめとんかこれだおい。おい、お前らからな俺らが一発でベルト引っ張ってやるからよ。解雇して待っとけボケこれ。Sushi Kanda saying it's only going to take one, going to take one shot, and they're going to take those triangle gate championships. I guess that we're going to have to wait for the official announcement. Watch, watch our social media the, for the official announcement. But there goes the Torimon crew leaving right now. This place is about to get a lot quieter. They've been incredibly boisterous all night. Here comes KZ with a microphone now. And now the Dragon Gate generation. Again, if you were watching for free here on YouTube tonight, go sign up on DragonGate.live. Don't miss all, of the, all those matches that you, we just mentioned. And more. Well, KZ is saying even though there's no fans here tonight, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I want to be embarrassed by the fans. いてほしいところですが、まあ今の現状、これは仕方がない。でも逆にこれをやってまた新たなものが見つかったんじゃないですかね。KZ saying that it's usually the fans that are giving the wrestlers words of encouragement. So this is これだけできるんですよ。This is a little bit of payback. We are sending words of encouragement out to you all in these difficult times. Listen to our friends out west. そして、Oh, okay, we got an announcement. Oh, could it be? Oh, he's calling in UT. UT's been out of action for almost a year. With a broken collarbone. UT's got something to say. Yeah, すごく溜まっているものありました。去年の5月札幌で骨折して約1年間欠場してましたけど 
ようやく皆さんにいい報告が、oh, good news from UT. さっきトライアングルゲート4月5日名古屋で決定しましたけどその4月5日名古屋大会で UT 復帰します UT! After almost a year on the shelf with a broken collarbone, will return to action in his hometown of Nagoya on April 5th. The Dragon Gate generation just got back a very, very valuable member. Unbelievable news. ネットワークをご覧の皆さんお待たせしました約1年間正直まあね本当いろんな皆さんの活躍があってまあいろいろ思うこともありましたけどようやく発散するときましたんで次来月は3本またありますけどその時には今週も来たUTで帰ってきます